Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Trombone First Aid. Today I would like to talk about the first movement of the Trombone Concerto by Rimsky-Korsakov. This solo piece is often played at the high school or at the early stage of your career as a student. And this is, in my opinion, very important to practice the basics of our instrument. So it's not particularly virtuoso or I don't know, uh, showing off <laughs> very incredible solistic uh, cap capacities. But this requires you to have a very steady, solid and reliable basics. This is why I think this is really important to be taken as a, a reference for the average student who want to progress and make a solid base for the future development of technique and musicality. So, this opening may look quite simple, but actually there are many hidden problems which we should face in our practice every day. So, starting like this is kind of kamikaze style. Then you have to be very really sure of your basics, very sure that your attacco in the low register, in the loud dynamic, are safe and ready to use when you have to start this concerto. I propose my usual uh, procedure to go through this first movement. So, sound quality, coordination with the slide, taking care of articulation and differences with articulation, and then thinking about intonation, music, dynamics. So, for the first step, I always recommend to play everything with glissato. So the smoothest and warmest sound you can do with glissato and with no articulation at all. Even the attack of the notes should be without tongue. Don't matter with the tempo, don't think about it, just play with the most beautiful and natural sound you can get. As a dynamic, imagine uh, mezzo forte plus, so it has not to be real forte, but a very natural airflow and sustained airflow. That's why I say mezzo forte plus, so you are kind of with the, already the mind going to the forte. This is good to be used for every kind of passage, especially here in the triplets where we need technique and then later we have no time to care about the sound. It's really important that at this stage the sound is homogene over through the register, over all the register, and we have control of the quality. We have to get out of the bell what we want. So for this, you should record yourself. You should really listen to your recording with a very critical attitude. Of course, you can use this technique also for legato. And so on. So this is the way you should practice. This specific way of practicing is also very useful for low register and high register. So when you get a bit further from the mid register, which is more comfortable. So for example, Don't worry if you have to breathe more than what you would like to. Here, everything has to be 
on the side of the sound quality. And for the high register, I suggest this glissato, so you can connect the F to the high B flat. I play it once again. This is very useful, especially later when you will try play in tempo and with articulation, to have a very natural, rich, high B flat. We always have the tendency to splat low notes and to choke high notes when we play forte with articulation. Now, with this glissato, it's the moment where you can just focus on the sound quality, the beauty, the meat, the fat of your sound. After this first stage, we add coordination. For me, coordination is the way we should use the slide in order to have the exact correspondence to what we want to play and where we are with the positions. So it's like for pianists to put the right finger in the right key. For us, it's a bit more tricky because the keys have different uh, distances. For the piano, it's always the same. For us, half tone can be 60 centimeters away. So it's very important that keeping the glissato style, we increase the slide speed between the notes so we fall exactly in the note when the tempo tells us to, to be there. It's not a matter of playing faster. You should actually keep a very slow tempo. The thing which should be faster is only the slide. So the slide speed is not related to the tempo of the music we play. This is really, really important. This will help you to have a more clean articulation, both in staccato and in legato. For example, for the legato, this will help you to use much less tongue to avoid glissato because your slide is going to be so quick that you cannot hear the glissatos anymore and then you are not obliged to use the tongue to divide the notes. And so on. Now that our sound quality is, is under control and we achieved more coordination with our slide, we think about articulation. So articulation is the last step because it requires both sound quality and coordination in order to have enough quality to work on. If at this stage the rest is not fit, now we will bring on our backpack all the problems we didn't solve until now. As a general rule, I would start reading the piece with the same articulation for every note. So we are not going to differentiate between legato, staccato, staccato with dots. We just try to get the best articulation we can using the strongest articulation marks we have. So for example, at the beginning we have dot staccato. This, in my opinion, doesn't mean that it has to be short. It actually means that it has to be very clear, really marcato. So thinking about timpani sound is really helping us. <laughs> So it is actually short, but not focusing on 
cutting the sound, but giving the sound a clear beginning. So giving the best of our sound at the beginning of it, not later. Just thinking at the sound of timpani, which is starting immediately when the mallet is hitting the surface, and then is dampening through the time. Normally, I use a program called Audacity, which is for free, but you can use any sound recorder which lets you see the uh, waveform of what you play. So the goal is to achieve a very tuck, a very square waveform at the beginning, which is ending with a nice V-shaped uh, or U-shaped uh, tail. So we have to start the sound vertically and then smoothing down when you when we release the the note if we notice that at, in the attack of our sound there is a v it means that the sound is coming a little later so we actually start with too much articulation and not enough sound so i will say that the articulation is not healthy is not what we aim to after all when we play uh, we have to start with sound. We cannot start with the noise of our tongue of, or any other kind of uh, not wanted thing. Imagine a piano, when they press the key, the sound is there. And we have to play in the same way. I mean, we play trombone, who has a uh, different characteristic, of, which has different characteristic, of course, but the goal of playing together is to mix with other instrument. And then we have to give our instrument the possibility to play like others. So we have to start the sound, every note, with the most beautiful sound and immediately together with the attacco, not later. I will take every note separately and try to make the best attacco I can. <laughs> I mean, this is just the beginning, but if this is not okay, you have to solve problems now. You cannot start playing through the piece without having control over every single attack. Imagine when you play faster, then you have no time to do that. So sorry if I repeat, repeat over and over this, but this I know that this is a common problem for, for students to have no patience to spend time in boring exercises. But this is really very important. So for me, having this visualization of the sound helped a lot to realize what I have to do to correct it. So try out this recording problems with the, the waveform of your sound and fix it in order to make it more clear and direct since the beginning. Once we have control over every single attacco in the piece, we start looking at the rhythm and we start looking also at the speed because it will make a, a big difference when it's slow or fast. This is a quite fast tempo, so normally it's 132 for the quarter notes. But we can start, as we should start much slower. And I suggest, since the pattern is like a triplet pattern, to do this kind of exercise to improve your control. So repeating triplets over each note will give you the feeling of the speed but we let you room and time to control the passages between different notes because you repeat the same notes three times before going to the next one. Then, if the final tempo is... Then we play with the triplet. Of course, now I was showing you the last tempo, so the tempo you will use in the concert. But you have to start really slow. 
um, whenever you feel that you have not 100% everything in control, you have to step back or stay in the same tempo and try to gain this control you lack. But until you don't feel at ease, don't go on. You have to get used. You have to get comfortable and steady, stable in this staccato uh, practice. Once we made sure that every attacco is clean, once we have enough agility to pass between notes with this kind of articulation, then we look more in depth about how the composer suggests us different articulations. So already in the first bars, we see this dot staccato, legato, legato staccato, and accent with a legato note afterwards. These differences should be audible. So we have to decide before playing what we want to do with all these four different articulations. Of course, there is room for interpretation. The important thing is that you stick to your ideas from the beginning to the end of the piece. So if you have not a clear idea from the beginning, it will not get better later. So that's why the planning is the most important part when you want to think about music. I made another video about practicing in general, and this is also apply applicable to um, sound quality and articulation, not only music. Because as now <laughs> we will see, articulation is connected to music. Sound is connected to music. You can change your sound, your colors, you can change your articulation to give a musical expression. And this is really very important that is not coming from him, that is coming from your brain and your heart. So you have to plan it at the beginning and you have to ask yourself to obtain it from the instrument. That's why I'm saying you must record yourself and listen to what is coming out from the bell. So about these four kinds of articulation, as I said before, this staccato with dots, for me, it's something not necessarily short, but really clear. So it has to be a very, very clear staccato, thinking about the, uh, I said timpani, but in this case, it could be even like a snare drum. So something really uh, military. When we have legato, normally this is connected also to a softer and smoother atmosphere. So the legato is often connected to a release of energy and release of stress. Legato staccato could be meant as the same mood as this release of energy and release of strength, but with more clarity between notes. And finally, this pattern of accent note legato, in my opinion, can be seen as a diminuendo through two notes. So in the way like uh, the accent is written, it suggests that the sound should start in a loud volume and then a bit less. When it's accent legato to another note, I can imagine that this accent is kind of suggesting a diminuendo through these two notes. So for the first triplet, very clear. The legato, very smooth. The legato staccato. So it's not staccato, it's kind of connected, but clearly coordinated. And then this accent with legato. Okay, now I was exaggerating, but this is the, the way I see it. So, the first note, louder than the, than the second note. So, now that we've fixed 
what we want to do with our articulations, we apply this throughout the piece to every section. As I said before, uh, articulation is often linked also to music. Now let's start to analyze a bit the piece and the sections. So from the beginning until four bars before letter B, we have this triplet pattern with this military feeling. Then for four bars before B, we have a more relaxed section, which is actually written using more uh, legato. Here, we still have to, to keep this feeling of something marching, but the mood is much more soft, much more at ease. And then the legato um, articulation help us to relax a bit. We could connect this also to a release in the dynamic range. So here, we are not really forced to keep this forte we have from the beginning. Actually, here we have not so many dynamic indication. We can play a bit. So this is not to be like mezzo forte in comparison to the forte we had before. It's just the same forte in a more relaxed way. Then in the fifth bar after B, we have marked crescendo, going to fortissimo. This is together with a repeated pattern of triplets. When I see this, I can imagine like steps. So every triplet should be louder than the preceding one so that we can go to the fortissimo in a step scale. Then we have a fortissimo for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars without anything written. But the melody is going down. This we know already that with the trombone is very hard to achieve. High notes, they sound louder. And whenever we, we, we play low notes, they sound uh, not so loud and they require a lot of energy to be sustained. So when we have this, we have to plan in advance that the dynamic level should be more or less the same. So we cannot explode the fortissimo in the high F Otherwise, in the low F, we have no chance to keep the same dynamic. So we have to manage to dose our energies throughout this passage, giving the listener the feeling that we play with the same intensity. Then, from letter C, we have a piano section with always this legato staccato and some legato. As I said before, here it's meant to be more melodic and vocal, but still with this uh, military feeling. That's why this legato staccato. And then, in some parts, the legato can really be like a, a beautiful ornament. Here at the end, please sustain the sound because the orchestra is also making a crescendo.
Then from letter D on, we get back to the beginning atmosphere. So this military triplet section. What I would like to uh, mention, which is especially interesting and important to be careful around F when we have this high B flat. So for this, I suggest that in the two bars before F, we apply the same idea of playing crescendo in steps and starting at F, not with an explosive uh, fortissimo, because later on we have to go down to the low B flat without actually losing dynamic intensity. We did a good job at the beginning with the glissato to care about the sound quality, but now that we have all the problems together like articulation, speed, and then it may happen that the high notes are not so beautiful as we wish. If something is alerting us about problem with quality, then we always have to go back to the glissato to fix this sound problem. So make sure that the airflow is healthy. When we play high notes, we tend to use too much force on the lips and then we get stiff, we get tired. The sound is not beautiful because we kind of stop our lips from vibrating and we have not enough air going to the lips because they are too close. We have always to think that high notes are not so high as they look like. We tend uh, for instinct to react too much, to use too much force, to uh, be too tense and stiff, while getting to the higher register is not such a big problem. So once more we step back to this glissato. This note should not be should not be much different than the octave lower. If we have the feeling that when we play high B flat, we are making too much of an effort, we have always to step back to the lower octave. and try to have the same relaxed feeling when we go higher. Maybe it will not be the most focused high B flat, but if you keep your throat open, your lungs relaxed, your lips together but not pressed, you will see that it will be much, much easier to get a high B flat. Uh, then, of course, to achieve more focus, you have to find a good balance between embouchure and airspeed. But starting from the lower energy version will grant you that when you are stressed and nervous, you have more resources to do it right. Be careful that here we have dot staccato in the eight notes and not legato staccato like it was before letter C. Earlier I mentioned uh, intonation. Of course, I didn't mean that until now intonation was not important. You should never play something out of tune. Otherwise your inner diapason is getting lost. I'm just saying that uh, there are things that you cannot carry all at the same time and for intonation uh, something very important is when you listen to your recording. In this moment you can really point out where are the most problematic parts, where you really lost track of your intonation, where it was nailed. So listening to your recording 
it's the most important part for intonation. Then you can learn from your mistakes because while playing, it's really difficult to get what is wrong. What I noticed with my students and on myself, in this first part, uh, we have often problems with the C, with the B flat, and with the high G. These notes are a bit uh, critical, so please take an eye over, over them. I also noticed that the section between C and D, in the letter C and D, it's quite problematic when you play together with piano or the orchestra. Probably because there are some notes which have different functions in the chords and then you have to adjust them not melodically but harmonically. So especially for this part between C and D, I suggest you play together with a bass or together with an accompaniment. Then common problems are that when we play soft, intonation gets lower, when you play loud, it gets sharper, or for example, when you, get, when, when you play loud, high notes, it gets even higher, and when we play loud, low notes, it can be even more flat. So take this into account and check your recordings to find where the problems were. So this was not meant to be exhaustive uh, walk through the practice of this uh, concerto. I just wanted to give you some ideas uh, I used for my students and I hope this was also helpful for, for you. If you like these videos, please put like and subscribe my channel and check out all my other videos because this is kind of uh, summarizing what I already said in a more extensive way in other videos about basics and about exercises taken from Arbanz and Koprash. Ciao!